Have you ever wondered if your RV salesman is lying to you? In today's video, I'm gonna talk about three lies that RV salesmen will tell you to try and close the sale. If you're new here, my name is Jacob. I'm a certified RV technician, and I've got a bunch of free resources for you, including my Don't Buy a Lemon Guide, which will help you spot manufacturing defects, as well as my Don't Get Stranded checklist you can use to help avoid four of the most common reasons that I would get called out to stuck RVs. When I asked what stories people had to share RV salesman lies, I was instantly flooded with stories. I think this video is going to be a part one of a series. The first lie that came up quite a bit was that, oh, your vehicle is fine to tow whatever RV. Sandy wrote to me saying that she was shopping RVs and her salesman that she had bought three other RVs from, and he's telling her that this Keystone Cougar half ton fifth wheel would work fine for their half ton truck. She went and asked other experienced RVers and the feedback she got was that the half ton truck is just not quite enough to pull, especially where they live, where there's a bunch of hills. When she went back and told the salesman she didn't think it was gonna work out, first he tried to discredit all of her friends and when that didn't work, he decided to try and pressure her to buy a whole new pickup truck so he could still make the deal on this one RV. My favorite story has to come from Steve. The salesman told him that like the gross vehicle weight was all that mattered and none of the other details were important. Another lady at the dealership asked what kind of truck he had and he responded a Silverado without giving any indication as to the actual size of Silverado. Her response was, oh, my son has a Silverado and he tows heavy farm equipment all the time. I'm sure it'll be fine. The thing you have to remember about RV salesmen is that they get paid more when you pay more. If they can get you to buy a bigger RV, one that is maybe on the edge, if not unsafe to tow with your vehicle, they're going to push for that because bigger RV means higher commission. Here's the truth from a technician. Pulling an RV that is too large for your tow vehicle is a safety hazard. If you've ever seen some RVs shooting down the road and the trailer just wagging behind it like this, that's a death trap. That's literally a rollover accident waiting to happen. The number one reason you see that trailer wag is because of an oversized RV on a undersized tow vehicle. This is why when I'm consulting with a client, making sure that their tow vehicle to RV ratio, the, like the weights are correct, is one of the most important and first things that I'm going to do. If changing vehicles is not an option for them, then we really need to restrict our search for RVs to something appropriate to tow behind their tow vehicle. I mean, good night. I just did a consulting job where I told the lady she needed to buy an F450, not an F350, in order to haul her big toy hauler. I'm not saying that every RV salesman will mislead you on this topic, but the problem is enough will that you just can't inherently trust that they are sharing accurate information with you. I got to make a whole new course on how to select the right tow vehicle. Leave a comment if you want me to make a whole course on how to select the right tow vehicle and RV combination. The next lie that came up a lot was that Salesmen will tell them that they don't need a third party inspection. We take care of all of that here for you. Sean wrote to me and said that his salesman told him he'd been working at the dealership for 10 years and had never heard of anyone having a third party inspection. The salesman let him get the inspection because he wanted to sell the RV, but was reminding him like the whole way it was just a waste of money. Here's the unfortunate and sad reality of RV inspections from the dealership. The pre-delivery inspection is done by the least qualified, most inexperienced technician they can possibly find. There's a simple reason for this. Their good techs are out doing complicated repairs. The first level of certification that you get as a technician is how to test all the systems and just to confirm that they work or not. The problem is they pay a flat rate to the technician. The faster he does it, the more money per hour he makes. This incentivizes inexperienced technician who doesn't understand how some things are a huge safety concern to rush through the inspection and check all the boxes, even if he didn't test them. This means that the pre-delivery inspection that they charge you a ton of money for is in most cases really useless. My advice is always to decline the pre-delivery inspection from the dealer and to hire a third-party inspector to come and find what issues need to be taken care of under warranty before you take delivery of it. One guy who took my shopping course sent me an email to thank me. Because of my advice, he declined their PDI, hired a third-party inspector, and the inspection found massive bubbles in the roof. If you've never seen a rubber roof just peel itself off on an RV going down the highway, then you might not understand how much of a potential nightmare this guy saved 
saved himself from. He had to get the entire roof replaced before even taking possession of this new RV. Sean also identified improper plumbing, and he requested that the dealership correct that before he bought the RV. And they did. They replumbed his new RV in order to get the sale. So if you didn't know this already, I have an RV shopping course where you can learn how to shop smart like Sean and avoid lemon RVs, avoid RVs with bad plumbing, and avoid a lot of headaches. I've got many, many more lies to cover, but the third and final one I'm going to cover in today's video is that RVs on the lot are well-maintained. Scott wrote to me saying that he was trying to buy a new pop-up camper. All the pop-ups he was looking at the dealership were two or three years old. There was water leaks from them sitting there, not being maintained. Some RV manufacturers require that you have your roof resealed every six months to maintain their warranty, which means if your RV is sitting there for a year or two years on the lot, not being maintained, there's a good chance that it's got cracks in the caulking and water damage already happening. These campers were sitting there experiencing lot rot from their negligence. And even though they were quote new and the salesman wanted to sell it to them at a new price, these things were damaged goods already. Salesmen will also try to use the rotted out campers to try and get you to buy something more expensive. They are taught is to show you three RVs. One that's bombed out and junk. Another one that's more than you want to pay, but has everything you want. And then a third one that's way more than you need and way more than you want to pay. Not every salesman will do this, but there is a definite technique to guiding people towards buying the RV that they want you to buy. Like I said, folks, this is going to be part one of I don't know how many, but leave a comment if you have a story about lies that an RV salesman has told you that you'd like to share. It may be included as a word of warning to RV buyers in my next video. Click here to watch all of my undercover RV reviews. And in the future, if I make more of these videos, you can click here for the playlist.